What's up, what's up, everybody? Come on in. Welcome, welcome. Come on through, folks. Make yourselves at home. We are finishing up today, for now. <clears throat> We're finishing up our work on the great six chord, the small chords. Now, there's some things uh, different about today. We're going to be doing sort of a live Q&A throughout this entire session. You do have to be a, a subscriber to our channel to be able to ask a question and comment. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. I know most of you already are, uh, but if you want to... If you want to participate and ask any questions, it's just going to be general about these chords because there can be a lot of a lot of misconceptions or maybe misunderstandings. So I thought we can use today to clarify it. This is going to be mostly a tutorial. We're not really going to be uh, practicing any kind of exercises like we have the last two weeks. Those are like the calisthenics, the push-ups, the sit-ups, and now it's time to play the game. We're not talking about practice. We're talking about playing the game. How do we put all these together? And again, if you want to comment and ask your question on this particular live, uh, you must be a subscriber. So click that subscribe button uh, to join the party. And then why not smash the like button while you're at it, all of you, so that we can spread the word. What's up, Jason? I'm well, man. How are you? Miro from Germany. What's up, Danny? Let me know where you're practicing from before we get going here. Yannick from Poland. What's going on? Sinbad GP. What's up? What's up? What's happening, folks? Yeah, let me know where you're working from in the world. Oh, boy. Serge Wies. <laughs> I know you say the name. I'm so sorry, man. You're like such a cool dude, too. What's up, Dan? What's up, Michael? Great playing earlier, Michael. Michael just crushed it on an open studio masterclass with the great Z uh, Glenn Zaleski. What's up, Benjamin and Benjamin? One from Maryland, one from Montreal. What's up, Austin in California? Jason is practicing from Spain. Johnny Blue says, excuse me, is this the Kenny G class? Maybe. Maybe. What's up, La Cantalou from Argentina, Lance from Liverpool, Lisa from Connecticut, Steve from Charlottesville, what's up, Jack, Double Dippin' from Hilton Head, Danny from Fort Myers, and from Germany, Sorcha from Dublin, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name, Jason says, I'm really a beginner, that's okay, we've got a ton of beginners on here, Jason, and actually, if I were to start over with like my whole piano journey, if I, if I were to choose what to start with for making chords, what we're doing today is what I wished I would have started on. Don't get me wrong. The instruction that I got from some very good teachers at a young age was great, but these are so cool. <laughs> like these are so great for making all different kinds of chords and really simplifying the process that I envy people who are coming at it now when there's YouTube and things where you can find uh, really, really useful basic information like this. This is so cool. I mean, I'm honestly starting at this as if I'm a beginner. I'm, I really want to get these as if I'm just learning them from the first time. Danny missed a master class. You missed a good one. Glenn Zaleski. Man, what a player. What a great teacher. Be careful with the coffee cup. About Yeah, no, this is my tea, actually. It's a little tea. Uncle note from Newfoundland. Newfoundland. I'm fairly adept around the keys with the T. Thor is now a subscriber. Yeah, if you want to comment, you have to uh, subscribe. We're going to take some questions as we're doing this particular session. And we'll start in just a couple minutes. Please smash the like button so we get a big room in here full of folks. But I wanted to do really with the, the goal of this practice is to not just have a tutorial of how these work in the wild, in real life, when we want to use them with tunes, but uh, clarify any questions you might have. What's up, Clint? What's up, Boido from Belize? What's up, Austin? Dolphin Dance and Beautiful Love might be good tunes to demonstrate these concepts over really particular standards. So I have it set up today, Austin, for all the things you are. So standard that a lot of people know it takes us through a couple of different scenarios and it's got that great melody that's just the whole note for a long time so it gives us a little bit of room 
Dan says the overhead camera looks so good. It's are we going top shelf or not? We're going top shelf here. <laughs> uh, Eli Yag one says, "Hey Adam, does anyone call you Adam the Menace Manus? No, I got a lot of uh, uh, like in elementary school a lot of a dumb mayonnaise. I got that. Sometimes I get Adam the Man. I get the Mantis sometimes, which I confuse. I don't really look like a praying mantis." Oh, Clint's got the COVID, so I practiced on what well, Clint, I hope you are recovering swiftly. I hope it's not too bad for you. What's up? Uh, Hannah from Norway. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A menace on the keys. I can be menacing when I want. All right, we're about there, folks. I think it's 2.05. Again, smash that like button so we get a big room. Uh, this is really awesome. And again, we're going to kind of have a Q&A as we go here. So if you... <laughs> the prank mantis, Peter Martin says. So if you... If you are... Thank you. Thank you. So if you have any questions about what we're doing, you can actually ask them. You have to be a subscriber to our YouTube channel uh, for them to appear. And <laughs> I love it. A damn menace. That is nice. A Damn Menace. I think that's the name of my next record. Thank you, Austin. You, I will not send you a royalty track for that. What's up? Bruce is up in here. Welcome to YouTube, Bruce. All right, let's do it, everybody. It is time that we get to it. So welcome to our final session for these amazing little small chords, these amazing little shapes. I've had such fun the last two weeks prior to this teaching you about these little six chord concepts that that really, these are all from the uh, brilliant mind of Barry Harris, who we tragically just lost recently. And I've been inspired to go on a, on a bit of a deep dive on this concept. And I'm, it's just so rewarding. It's such a deep well that we can pull from. And what a master at organizing uh, this language for us. So shout out to Barry Harris. Also, I've been listening to a lot of people like Hank Jones and Errol Garner and, and Red Garland who play this kind of style of chord a lot and who can be very inspirational for how to put this to use in real life. Speaking of real life, you know, the last two sessions, which I encourage you to check out part one and part two here of our six chord workout, if you haven't already, uh, we worked basically on some exercises to get these in our hands on a major 2-5-1, a minor 2-5-1, somewhat of a longer chord progression on part two. But I didn't really give you much information of how to apply this to actual tunes. And some people were asking, like, well, how does this work in a practical way? And so that's what we're going to be really working on today. We're going we're gonna to learn how to use six tunes in, I think, just an incredibly beautiful way. We're going to learn how to do things like this. <laughs> How gorgeous is that? Those are all just six chords and diminished seven shapes. All the things that we've been working on, all the things you are. Hey, listen, everything we do around here is sponsored by Open Studio. If you want a deeper dive on all of this, go to openstudiojazz.com and check out all of our offerings. We do have a PDF for today's session, so download that if you want to follow along. And by the way, today's session is all about playing tunes with small chords. That small chord in particular, that little six shape. This is also, by the way, a live Q&A. We're live on YouTube streaming as we do this. You might be watching this later, but if you're here on Friday, January 21st at 3 p.m. Eastern, you are live watching this with me now. And I encourage you to ask a question in the chat. I'll put the question on the screen and we can kind of clarify some things that we've been working on now for this is the third week. Uh, so this will not be as much of a session, a guided practice session, as it will be a tutorial and a bit of a Q&A so that we can clarify some things. So let's look at the, the ways that we can really get into this, the ways that we can use this in a tune like All the Things You Are, the types of ways to use all of these six voicings that we've been learning the last couple of weeks. There's four. One is closed voicings where the melody is the top of the shape. Two are open voicings where the melody is the top of the shape. Three are closed voicings where the voicing is between the root and the melody. And four are open voicings where the voicing is between the root and the melody. So 
let's clarify that. What does that look like in real life? So let's look here. Let's start with just what we're dealing with here. So this is sort of the, the basic sketch of what we're going to be working with. All the things you are. This is the first bar of all the things you are, right? The melody is A flat. U is the lyric, in case you really want to go on a deep dive. The melody is A flat, and of course the root is F. It's an F minor, seven chord, F minor chord. So we have a bunch of options of how to voice chords in those four ways using nothing but our six chord. So of course for an, a minor seven chord, it's going to be an A flat six shape, right? A flat, C, E flat, and F. Right? We know that that sort of relative major six shape is what we want to use for our minor sevens chords. So here we have the melody as the top of the shape. So literally the melody is part of that A flat major six shape. In this case, it's A flat, so it makes, you know, it's, it's totally easy to just put it right there at the top. So here, if you look at our first example, that's our closed voicing, A flat major six in our right hand only, right, with the melody as part of the voicing. This is kind of the most obvious version of, of this. And if you think, well, that's kind of boring. Like, this is a great way to be able to do some interesting things with your left hand, kind of free up your left hand to be able to play just one note at a time, and then fill in, comp for yourself with the rest of the voicing. These work great for that. That kind of thing, right? Where you can play the melody with your pinky, with your fifth finger, and then sort of add some rhythm with the rest of the chord. The other way to, to put the, the melody note as part of the chord, right, is to use it in an open voicing, in a drop two situation. So the very same voicing, if we take the second note from the top and we drop it down in octave, we get this drop two shape. And now this is really great, especially for where this chord is, right? With the melody on top, now you have a big spread out voicing. You know what I mean? And even though we have an octave in our left hand, that's okay because look at what you can do. Again, breaking these up between the hands. Now we have a middle hand, right? We have the melody with the fifth finger of our right hand, the bass with the fifth finger of our left hand, and in the middle, using sort of the middle four fingers, we can add some more rhythm to this. This is how you get these beautiful comped rhythms. So these are the two examples of when you use the melody as part of the actual shape itself. These are both A flat six shapes, A flat, C, E flat, and F. One is a closed voicing where everything is as close together as possible. And one is a drop to open voicing where we take the second note from the top and drop it down an octave. This is our first two ways of voicing melodies using these six chords, right? The second two ways, ways number three and four, are the between voicings. Now this is where the afternoon can go from good to great because this is this is like just beautiful genius territory here when you can put these voicings in between. I'm gonna raise the bass note up an octave so that we don't have a 10th here. And I want you to check this out. So here, remember our melody and our root, our melody is A flat, our root is F, and we're to fill in the chord with a closed A flat six voicing. So here in the middle in red is our A flat six shape, A flat, C, E flat, and F. Now notice there are gonna be plenty of repeated notes in these kinds of chords where the chord is in between, and that's just fine because it's structured in a way that is just gorgeous. Now this is just a, a F minor seven straight up from F all the way up to that A flat a 10th up with every note in between. That's how it works out. You could do a 10th if you can reach and you get this beautiful closed voicing. It does not matter where the closed voicing is. Like you could do it down here, right? F, A flat, C. And this, any inversion you could do, whoever sounds good. This is the closest, but you can, as long as you have your melody and your root, you could put any closed uh, A flat six in the middle. How great is that? Now we can do the same thing with some open voicings. Look at here, here's the same thing. We have our root and our melody, right? We, that's a given. We can put a four note drop to A flat major six shape in the middle. Listen to that. And then if you look at this, this is kind of easy to remember because it's like it's just up fifth and then a fourth from the root and then from the third, up a fifth and then a fourth. It's a super easy one. And then there's a little variation you hear a lot of people do where they 
do a little nine. You hear Peter Martin doing that one quite a bit. But this, I mean, that's just a drop two A flat six voicing, right? And we know it's going to work because the structure is there. Like it's, it barely takes care of all of it for us. We don't have to think about anything. It's just like uh, you could be a dummy like me and just think uh, A flat six and that's all you got. So those are the four, the four voicings that we're going to work from again. And I encourage you to just think about it like that as closed with the, the melody in the top of the shape, open with the melody in the top of the shape, closed with the voicing in between, and open with that shape in between. Okay, so let's put this to work with some examples of all the things you are. So it's a beautiful tune, it's a beautiful tune. So here's our combination. We're gonna save that for the end. Let's first look at the closed top of the shape voicings. Now, if you have any questions, please leave it in the chat and we're gonna get to them as soon as we can here. Um, literally, hopefully as, as soon as I can see some good questions just to clarify a couple of things so like here danny says which six chords are dominance based off that's based off the sixth from the fifth so danny if you have an unaltered dominant you can use uh say here if it's um e flat seven right you use the minor sixth from the fifth so for an e flat seven you use a b flat minor six shape b flat d flat F and G. And then again, all the inversions closed, all the inversions drop to, all are good to know. But that's all E flat seven, E flat nine, really. And then if you want an E flat seven flat nine, you can do the D flat diminished shape for the flat nine, of course. Those diminished shapes work great. So that is our, our first question. Kasa Lapalav Lev. Sorry if I'm not saying that right. Is what's the difference between closed and open voicings? So again, I'll go back here, right here to this, and you can see here the closed voicing. Everything is as close as possible. So we have our A flat six. Everything is close as possible. The open voicing, we're using drop two. We take the second note from the top, we drop it down an octave, right? And it's now in our left hand, and that is the difference between the closed and the open voicings. All right. So, okay, so Joey says, this is all such good stuff. So Joey says the minor six as a two chord sounds just like the five chord. What are your thoughts on this? Are there times you would explore that sound? So Joey, that's exactly what I was talking about, right? So if you're in the key of A flat, which we are, and you use that B flat minor six, right? Instead of like, if you use it on, as the shape on top of an E flat in the bass, that is an E flat dominant nine, right? So if you were to use on the two chord, a B flat minor six, you're really using more of an E flat seven sound than a B flat minor. The reason why people use a two chord is for this movement, Joey. A flat here, the seventh of our two, going to the third of the five. That's what you want from that two chord, ultimately. All right, so let me get to just a couple of these closed top of the shapes. So check this out. Uh, and maybe we'll do a little Q&A here in the next five minutes, but I wanna do a little bit of a tutorial on this. So here's our very first version. Every chord here is a closed voicing and the melody is the top of the shape, right? So here's our F minor seven. We have the A flat six shape, right? Our B flat minor seven, we have our, our D flat six shape. Now, if this were a, like, a, to Joey's point, if this were like a, a B flat minor six, right? It would sound like a five chord with the B flat in the bass. So we're gonna save that, Joey. You want this suspended sound with that A flat that's eventually gonna line, line, land up with, line up with our E flat here. And look at that. We've got the B flat minor six shape right there, just as you were saying. So we have that for two beats and then we have the B flat diminished shape to give us a nice E flat seven uh, flat nine sound. And then the A flat, major nine, that's an E flat six shape, right? The sixth from the fifth. So we we start a six chord from the fifth of whatever our root is. So here it's A flat major, E flat major six is the sixth chord. Same thing here, D flat major nine, 
the sixth from the fifth, A flat six. These are all closed voicings with the voicing, the top note of the voicing is actually the melody. Now we're gonna do this thing that Barry talks about all the time where you go from this A flat six here on our D flat major nine, like the A flat six shape. It's not an A flat six chord, it's an A flat six shape. The chord is actually D major nine. To so a D flat six shape, which is the D flat six there. I'm in the first bar of the second stanza, right? And then here, our G9, this is exactly to Danny's point. Here's what you would use over the dominant, the sixth from the fifth. What is a G dominant scale? It's all white keys, right? It's a G mixolydian. If we were to build a sixth chord from the fifth of G, the fifth is D, it would be a D minor sixth chord, right? Isn't that great? So here, going to our F diminished for a little flat nine sound. And then our G6, and that should be a C6 there. there. So that is when the melody is the top of the shape. I mean, how wonderful is that? Just that alone, it's a little, like, just every, each one of these by themselves gets a little repetitive, which is why we wanna use a combination of all four of these. Let's look at number two. So number two still has the melody as the top of the shape. Right? And it's the exact same shapes with each one of these four. We're not changing any of the shapes. It's still always gonna be A flat six on the F minor seven. It's always gonna be D flat six on the B flat minor seven. It's always gonna be B flat minor six and then B flat diminished for that E flat nine, E flat seven, flat nine. Those are all staying the same. We're just changing the structure of those four note shapes that are in between or on top of, or un right underneath, I should say, our melody. So here, right? All these beautiful drop two voicings. Listen to this. scoop. How about that? How gorgeous is that? So this is our second structure here with the melody is on the top note of our open voicings. All the same shapes. Like that's the thing is once you learn the shapes, right? The six shapes go with these kinds of chords. That's all you gotta know. You, you know them in inversions, you know them in closed and open voicings. Like it all takes care of itself. Then it's just a matter of like being an artist, which is, that's the hardest part, honestly. <laughs> like I made it sound like it was easy. Not easy. So I'm gonna take a couple of comments here. And again, feel free to comment and ask a question. This is partly a Q&A more than anything else. Uncle Note says, what about minor seven flat five to flat seven or to seven flat nine chords. So this was all in our last part two. That was what that was all about. But I'll give you a brief tutorial on note because it's really, really cool. So uh, if we were to do, where'd you go? So what about minor seven flat five to seven flat nine? So like typical uh, minor two five situation. So what you would want to do is you would want to do for the minor seven flat five, Monk called the minor seven flat five, apparently, according to Barry Harris. Monk, like, so if it's D minor seven flat five, Thelonious Monk would call that F minor over D. So we can think about this D minor seven flat five as really an F minor six with a D in the bass. And so that's the six chord we're gonna use for the minor seven flat five. It's absolutely gorgeous, Uncle Note. I encourage you to just go around again with all of these drop two voicings and closed voicings, so special. And then with the dominant seven flat nine, just as we've been using here, it's all about the diminished shape. I like to think of it built up from the seventh of our dominant chord. So if it's G seven flat nine, you know, after the D minor seven flat five, it's an F diminished shape. And that's how we get that beautiful dominant seven flat nine chord. Again, knowing all the inversions, closed and open voicings really, really helps. I like this because there's a couple of movements that we're gonna do later on for Open Studio Pro members that I think is just beautiful. And if you think about it as F diminished seven shape, it really, really helps. So thank you for that. That's a very thoughtful question. Again, don't forget to ask your questions. This is partly a Q&A as much of it, of it is a tutorial. So that is our open voicings with the melody being the top of the shape. Well, let's try closed voicings in between. Remember, remember, hold on. Let me hold, just hold on, hold on. Remember this. 
Not that. Don't remember that. <laughs> remember this. So that is key. That is all the information you need to know. The bass note and the melody. What can go in between that? So here are our closed voicings. Again, the same six chord, A flat six, D flat six for the B flat minor seven, B flat minor six, like understanding those. And again, I encourage you to check out parts one and two of our six chord workout because we go into them in depth. And if you really want to get into it, uh, go to openstudiojazz.com and check out our membership options because we're dealing with this like for the next month at least. And we have been, they're so, so handy. Uh, so check it out. Here's our melody and here's our root. F is in the bass. The melody is A flat. We can put a closed A flat six shape, A flat C, E flat, and F right there. Isn't that brilliant? I mean, it's it's just a stacked chord. There's nothing. I mean, it's as simple as it gets. But thinking about it as this shape is its own thing, it opens up a lot of freedom. We'll do the same thing for B flat, right? And then for our, we're gonna work this melody down. Look at this for the E flat nine. I've got a B flat minor six shape, right? B flat, D flat, F, G. And then a B flat diminished shape in the middle of our root. For our A flat major nine, that's an E flat six shape. Again, the sixth from the fifth. And these are, when, when you do these between the melody like this, so the melody isn't part of the chord. We're just putting a closed voicing. A lot of times you get this sort of George Shearing style locked hand voicing in between, right? This is what we're putting under it. So you get this octave system. If you want it, you don't have to. So in other words, if you have, here is, is our root and here is our melody on A flat major, you don't have to do the block chord, the closed voicing right below. You can actually skip down to here. Look at this, B flat, C, E flat, and G. That's an E flat six shape. Just right in the middle. I'm kind of borrowing here with my left hand to be able to hit that B flat. But this is where, I mean, this is it, having these chords in the middle, it gives us such a beautiful palette. And then we don't have to think about anything. All we have to think about is E flat six. Isn't that brilliant? So here's our D flat major nine, A flat six going to D flat six. And then here's our G nine. F diminished. G6 to C6. So that's our close between. That's our close between. Again, uh, give me some questions here if you are curious about anything. I'm happy to take this as a bit of a Q&A. And I think it's actually going to be pretty helpful for anybody who's even watching this later. I've got to caffeinate because I'm talking a lot. All right, let's check out our last version of this before we go to the combo. This is the open and in between. For me, this is so money. This is like so, so beautiful. And there's so much to do with it, especially if you want big spread out chords, if you want to start like arpeggiating stuff, it just gives us this beautiful sound. So again, let's check it out. Here's our bass, right? F, here's our melody. Now we're going to make a six chord in between, an A flat six chord this whole time. And you get this, C, F, A flat, and E flat. That's one option. You might also get this. That's also, right, two inversions of this drop to open voicing. Either one is good. You could use both. Here's our B flat minor seven. We're going to use a D flat six shape in between. Here's our bass and our melody. Right, there's our six chord. You could use this. You could use this. Whatever you think sounds good, you can use. Here's our E flat nine. Check this out. So again, here's our bass, here's our melody. Here's our B flat six chord in between. Sorry, that should be an F on top, not E flat. A little misprint there. F going down and then E flat six shape on the A flat major seven, just beautiful. Now check it out. So we've been doing this on the D flat major. I love this so much. We've been doing this A flat six shape going to a D flat six shape. Listen to how it sounds in these open voicings. The six that's moving in between there. 
can use the little pedal there to kind of feel your way through it. To our D minor six shape, again, using nothing but open voicings. To an F diminished shape. Isn't that great? Isn't that amazing? So, so good. So those are our four versions of this, right? We have closed with the melody note being the top of the voicing itself. Open with that same thing, the melody note being the top of the voicing itself. Open with, or sorry, closed with the chord being between the melody and the root. So it turns into a six note voicing. And then open with the chord being between the melody and the root. And let's go back now to our combo. So you can see how this kind of works in action, right? So, and I have them labeled here. Here's the closed between. And so here's our root, here's our melody, closed A flat six, open between. Here's our open with the top of the shape being part of the chord here. So B flat six, right? That top note G is part of the chord. Open with the chord in between. So pretty. Closed with the chord in between. Uh, open top of shape. Closed top of shape within the same bar. Like you don't have to pick one or the other. Isn't that good stuff? That's such good stuff. Like being able to just seamlessly go between all of these. First of all, it gives you so much voice leading options. You basically become a six part chorale in your living room. Like you can, you can really have some amazing voice leading. And it's so, so simple. It's just those six chords, right? It's like six different six chords. That's all we're talking about here. A diminished seventh shape. And then knowing where to put them, closed voicings, open voicings, all the inversions, uh, in these two styles, right, where the, the melody note is either the top of the chord or the chord is in between the bass and the melody. That's just the sweetest stuff. So there is, like I said, there is a PDF for this. Uh, I encourage you to take that home. Oh, thank you, Donald. Yeah, it is great stuff. So if you have any questions about any of the six chord things we've been working out uh, the last three weeks now, now is your time. Put it in the chat. You have to be a uh, Open Studio subscriber to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to get in the chat and ask your questions. Ah, this is an incredible question. What do you do with non-chord tones in the melody? So let's say you have a tune like Stella by Starlight, right? So this A, which is the first note, or the second note of the melody, right? Typically... That's an E half diminished, an E minor seven flat five. No, that's not the original change. That's, you know, but that's what everybody plays, right? Is an E minor seven flat five. So that's not part of the E minor seven flat five chord. You can still do this in even a closed voicing, an open voicing. You can do it with a closed voicing on in between, an open voicing in between. You just have to borrow a little bit. So here, this is actually a great voicing. Look at this. Sinbad, GP, look. It's just, it's our G minor six shape, right? For an E half diminished. I'm just subbing out instead of a G on top, A. It sounds great. You don't miss it at all. And in fact, what happens next? You know what I mean? Here, our very next chord is a C minor seven, right? With an F on top. So you can do all kinds of things with this. You can do open, closed, with just borrowing over, right? Like literally like, okay, so what's a, what for the C minor seven, it's an E flat six shape is the shape, right? Which you could play this easily. C, G, B flat, E flat, and just move that E flat up to F. Same thing for here, the F minor seven, G on top, right? For F minor seven, we would use A flat six. You can just move that F up there. Isn't that amazing? That's it. That's really all there is. You just, you get as close, like, here's my advice. Get close to the, to the note of the melody as possible with the voicing. And then instead of playing the top note of the voicing, play this note that's just outside. Actually, you're going to find some incredible things. 
All right, let's see here. Simbad said, I was worried about not including the third. So if you really need, like, so for this, like, C minor 7, right? On Stella. So, like, you might want a third in there. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity, though, to put that sixth voicing in between the root and the melody. And you could do that however you want. Closed, you can do a big tenth here. You know what I mean? If you really need to get that third in, do that. Remember, you can always have a root and the melody and put a sixth chord in between them, you know? That's the way to do it. But you can even, like I said, I don't mind that at all. Danny says, can you talk about, let me add this, can you talk about building a sus sound with the sixth chord? So super easy to do. Uh, we think about sus, sus chords as dominant chords, right? So if we have a C7 sus, what's the sixth chord? Can anybody tell me what the sixth chord is for the C7 sus? Anybody in the chat? What sixth chord do you use? Not on C7, just a regular C, a C9, a C7 for the regular dominant. We talked about it earlier, right? It's the sixth from the fifth. So for the dominant, it would be a G minor sixth for C7, just regular old C7, right? G minor sixth, yeah, that's right, Danny. The, the sixth from the fifth. If you want to do a C7 sus, that's a B flat major six, right? So here, B flat, D, F, and G. Now check it out. When we resolve the sus to a C7, it's just a one note difference. B flat major six, is B flat, D, F, G. We just move that F down to E. Bam. And how do you build voicings around that, Zeke asks? How do you build voicings? So first of all, all the inversions, right? So here's our C7 sus with our closed inversion, B flat, D, F, and G. B flat six shape, that's the shape we're putting over C. All the inversions, come on. That's closed voicings. Well, what about all the inversions, open voicings? That's how you build voicings, Zeke. Bam. Oh, Zeke had another question. Does the altered scale work with minor six? I'm so thankful for these questions. So actually, and what I just answered for you there, Zeke, will help with this as well, because it's all the same. Once you understand that it's all closed voicings, open voicings, and inversions, it's it's all gravy. So if you want to do something related to the altered, you can use a six. Again, let's go to C7. What if we want to do a, like a C7 flat nine, flat 13, which is something that gets you the altered sound, right? That's something that you might use on the way to like a minor chord traditionally, if you're going straight down the middle, you know what I mean? So for C7, we haven't talked about it on YouTube. We've been talking about it at Open Studio, uh, on Open Studio Pro as we've been discussing this, but there is a six chord that gets you the flat nine and the flat 13, and that six chord is D flat minor six. The minor six chord from a half step up, D flat, E, A flat, B flat, look at that. You've got the third and seven of C7, and then you've got the flat nine and the flat 13. And again, all inversions work beautifully. And again, you want to do open voicings. You want to make sure to have all of your open voicings handy. Some sound better than others, but they all work just great. So if you want a C7 flat nine, flat 13, which you can use as an altered sound, uh, you want to use that D flat minor six. Zeke says, I noticed my G7 voicings work for like D minor six chords, exactly. Danny says, absolutely incredible. Isn't it amazing? Like, it's such a simple thing. But also, here's the thing, everyone. Like, when you start to get these in your, when you start to hear these in your own playing, you're like, that's Hank Jones. That's Barry Harris. That's how they sound. Like, that's where that sound comes from. And you're like, ugh, why am I messing around with, like, all these what Barry called, like, big chords? I don't even know the little chords. Like, these are so fundamental. Like, let me show you one thing that I think is mind-blowing. And I know this is going to seem so stupid, but it's so... I'm like mind blown by this voicing particularly. Why am I mind blown by this? 
Because the structure of it is so perfect and beautiful. Here's our melody, C. Here's our chord. It's a C major, there's our root. I wanna put a C6 chord in between there. I'm gonna do an open voicing, a drop two voicing. So I have this, a C6, right, in drop two. How beautiful is that? Like if you wanted to do a little, it's so simple, but it doesn't sound like anything's unnecessary, like there's too many notes in it. It doesn't sound too thin or spread out. This technique of putting the six chord in between the melody, and how handy is that? Anytime you want to resolve to a six on a, on a tonic. I mean, that's worth everything right there. I know it's, that seems very simple and maybe you all, everyone here knew that but me, but like for me, that little voicing, that structure of here's my root, here's my melody, six chord in between, bam. That's so worth everything. It was so easy to do. Breakfast Plan says, how do you maneuver between negative and positive harmony? I don't really know what negative harmony is or positive harmony for that matter. I wish I could be more helpful, Breakfast Plan. <clears throat> All right, let's dig into this question. This is a good question. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna caffeinate for this question, Sinbad GP. We're live, folks, we're live. <clears throat> Are, uh, are there nice ways to create motion on an altered dominant since the diminished built on the flat nine of the chord creates <coughs> a dominant flat nine and the minor six of the flat nine creates an altered dominant sound? Oh, I'm so glad you asked this. So check this out. So are there nice ways to create motion on an altered dominant? So Sinbad, let's go back to that C7 flat nine flat 13, right? What do we say we could use? That D flat minor six, right? So we have our D flat minor six voicing. Look at it. this is just a six chord over a C. D flat minor six over a C. It gets us a beautiful uh, C seven flat nine flat thirteen. Are there motion we can do? Oh, I don't know. How about this? So we can kind of suss. Out, sorry, that was a little dramatic. We could suss out here our flat nine, the D flat, up to an E flat. And the beauty about this is you could literally do this with every inversion. How pretty is that? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. All of these. And where do these go? They go to F minor six. Isn't that great? So that's how you can create some motion with that. So you can do, here's my big block chord version of this. Where'd it go? But that's how you get that sound. Check that out. That's D, D flat six right here. Just reaching up and grabbing that sharp nine. Every inversion. How beautiful. Breakfast Plant says, I asked Steve Coleman, got a rather mind-blowing answer. That's definitely who's to, who's to ask about negative and positive harmony. I am, no, I'm not even a novice. I have no, no information. Johnny Blue says, can we integrate upper structures with this method? Seems like it. You certainly can. And that's sort of like what we were just talking about, actually, about this, right? Getting, grabbing that sharp nine from that flat nine, that's doing that, right? So you could start to do it by just simply moving some things, like a couple of things, Johnny Blue. So like if we have, again, our C7, right? With our G minor six shape, here we're G on top. Like a way to start grabbing upper structures. And here's what's so great about it is like you realize where these come from. G minor six. Oh, I want to reach up and grab the 13. Right? That's the same thing as what we were just doing. If we put G flat in the bass, that's a G flat 13 to a G flat seven, all with that D flat 
minor six, right? There's that. So another thing is, you know how I said I wanted to think about our C7 flat nine is B flat diminished? Well, that's because a great sound that you can get is you can reach up and grab this A on the B flat diminished. So you have <clears throat> like a B flat diminished with this A, like a, I don't think it's called a seven, but you know what I mean. B flat, D flat, E, and A, and that gets you this sound. And you can resolve that or not, but that's how you start getting into the upper structure thing. It's not really like using upper structure triads. It's a whole different thing. You know, that's the big chords, <clears throat> as Barry would say. Totally juicy. Yep, that's juicy. Danny says, it's amazing how quickly I was able to create such nice movements just now. I've been searching for that sound. Me too, Danny, as I'm saying. The sharp nine to the flat nine, then resolved. I love it. It's exactly right, Zeke. That's what these things are here to do is to like simplify everything. So you're not thinking about like, here's the flat 13, whatever. It's just D flat minor six. All right. Great questions, y'all. Great hang. Again, don't forget to uh, check out the old, the PDF, uh, the, oh, PDF, sorry. Check out the PDF uh, and you can, see all the voicings that we created <clears throat> and check out uh parts one and two the last two fridays i've been doing this and again if you want to go on a super deep dive uh check out open studio and go to openstudiojazz.com and you could really get to work so pdf should be in the description danny if it's not it will be there shortly Thank you so much, everybody. This has been a really fun couple of weeks, and I hope it's been helpful. It's been really uh, fun for me. Uh, there will be an Open Studio course coming very soon on all of these six chords that you could check out where we'll have everything in one place, and we'll go on a really deep dive. Guided practice sessions. You know how we like to do around here? That's what we do. Uh, if this is what you want to see more of, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Thank you, Eduardo. Appreciate it. You're very welcome, Danny. It's coming, Sinbad. We're, we're recording it in February. Expect it not too long after that. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Prelude, a.k.a. Jack. Thank you, Donald. Zeke says, have you heard of the music of Rio Fukai? I don't know it. No, but I'll check it out. You're welcome, Keith. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Bruce, good to see you. Thank you, Zeke. Thanks for all the great questions, Zeke. Well done. Oh, here we go. Bobby's got the really good question. Bobby says, what camera and lens are you using for the face cam? So we're using a G85, a Panasonic G85. That's the forward cam here. And we're using, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4, Bobby, for the lens. We should have our own channel. Peter and I should have our own channel on cameras and lenses because we got really into it in the pandemic. It's so much fun. But yeah, it's just a, a regular Panasonic G85, like a, a typical like mid-range camera for what we're doing. And it's a Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4. Those Sigma lenses for the money are so valuable. Like they're so, look at how good this looks. I'm not this good looking in real life. This is, makes you look a lot more handsome than you are. All right, Paolo, thank you for subscribing. Yeah, the 1.4, Bobby. Yeah, you know, that's all the bokeh. All right, that's our time for today, folks. Love it. Thank you all so much. I will see you next time. Cheers, folks. <laughs>